Hello, this is Bo. I hope you are having a fantastic day. Welcome to the second part of the hidden lives of Hoya Imprikara. In part one, we were looking at the two mounted Imprikaras, which I called Plan A and Plan B. And in this second part, we're going to look at the third one, which I call Plan C. Actually, Plan C was featured in a previous clip that I titled My Big Boy in Picada. Big Boy was actually the very first mounted in Picada that I got. And I was so proud of it that I called it My Big Boy. And you can see here how laden with leaves it had. Um, and by the time that I got, I'm, I was making the that big boy clip, I have had it for like about a month. And it was doing, I thought, fine, but it wasn't pushing out any new leaf. And um, I didn't know that it was really simply trying to survive in the new environment. I watered it twice a day, but that didn't seem to be enough. And to my inexperienced eye, as long as the leaves were still green, then everything ought to be hunky-dory. I should have looked at the vines or the stems itself. They were getting desiccated, meaning that they weren't getting enough moisture. And um, the plant was simply running on its reserve of energy to maintain its system. And in the pre uh, in part one, I was calling this transition period as the critical mass, and I was thinking that maybe the plant was still pushing out new leaves, and um, I ought to have given it more. Uh, nourishment, more care, whatever, and um, the fact that I watered it twice a day um, wasn't going to be enough. So, after that, making that clip, the leaves started to yellow, yellow out, and uh, they were doing it at a rapid pace. So. I had no choice but to kind of like do a accidental harvest and try to rescue those that were still green and ended up with a couple of propagation boxes even though I have no intention of propagate because um, I know nothing about it and I don't have the patience or the the knowledge to keep it, keep the propagation going. So here's the um, big big boy is at his at his last leg, and at this point you have only one main leaf which is yellowing, and it was trying to kind of like putting out a last gasp by having the tiny little leaf, but uh, that wasn't serviceable also. So I simply just kind of have to let it go, uh, very sadly. And now you can see that the whole lock is pretty much stripped bare. So I chalk that down to my inexperience so a lesson to be learned, and I hope I had learned it well. And here's the last image of um, Big Boy coming to rest. So now we're going to uh, look at what I w am going. I was going to do to um, for Plan A and Plan B 
to spare it the fate of Plan C. These are the big chunks of cocoa husk that I was going to use as a substrate because I'm going to put the, the two remaining logs into pots and hopefully the substrate would provide the humidity that they need. So I soaked the husk for a day or two and here they are used they are used in a pot to support the the log. And um, this time I pay attention to the stems and now I can distinguish between green one and desiccated one. Well I, I was uh, I was able to tell the difference before visually, but I had a very hazy idea what that translated translated to. So now I know that okay the the desiccate uh, stems has stopped um, doing its job, whereas the green one is still bringing nu nutrient to to the leaves, um, and also um, I make sure that is humid around the base so that um, the stem that reached down to the base would have some humidity to bring up to the plant uh, toward the top. And I also added some um, live moss. But uh, as you can see, the, the live moss is not being fed properly. so they are also yellowing out and after a week or so one of the logs start having leaves yellowing out whereas the other one the one on the right has pushed out a new leaf which is a good sign here I was trying to point out and actually uh, we're having a little bit problem of focusing so <laughs> so here I'm trying to point it out again ho hopefully in uh, good f uh, in good focus so l I keep my finger crossed and um, hopefully we will see that they would have a better future than plan C back to the propagation boxes um, eventually they all yellow out the leaves are all, will all yellow out and, and die um, as I said before, I, I that always my attention to to propagate anything, and um, happily there's one remain one sole survivor from the whole wreckage. This is one stem that put out three shoots, and here again I'm sorry I'm having a hard time focusing on those tiny shoots, but. Here's the one newborn, the sole descendant of big boy, a new baby. From those three shoots, uh, only one um, would, would crawl out from the cradle, so to speak, and, and grow, uh, and started to grow. Whereas the other two are still in there somewhere, but I guess right now, this tiny plant here is putting its energy on this end of the stem. So um, this is the, the baby. I'm so proud of it because at least I did not destroy the whole plant for nothing. At least there was, a, there was still some, some, something to keep the plant line going, so to speak. And hopefully one day it would grow up to be like its papa full of leaves, strong, vigorous, and uh, looking like a million. So on that note, I would say goodbye to you and hope you learn a thing or two about Imprecatus from this series, The Hidden Lives of Hoya Imprecata. And until the next video, I wish you a good day and take care. Bye.